Hi, just a quick one. I wanted to show you this uh, Roden Schwartz RTB 2004 oscilloscope, and it is sexy as 10 bit ADC in the thing. And uh, it's got all the bells and whistles, massive, big, high res uh, touch screen. It looks really incredible. Anyway, I just found an issue with it. I was actually uh, going to do some um, uh, noise measurements across m all the scopes here I have in the lab to see, you know, which one's the lowest noise and all that uh, sort of stuff. So I was feeding in a low level signal and I found an issue here. Take a look at this thing. Now, let's have a look at the screen here and Look at this, I'm feeding in an 11 hertz signal, just, I was feeding in uh, 20 before, but like 11 hertz just makes it show up a bit uh, more consistently. Look at this, right? It's, it's a low level signal, I don't think the amplitude uh, matters, I can try that later, but look what's going on here. There's this weird looking artifact, like it's almost as if it's got some, I've got to be careful, this is touch screen, um, weird like memory sampling artifact or something. Look, that signal should not be doing that. Now, it's absolutely fine and dandy. You put it in um, single uh, shot mode and everything's uh, fine. But when it's uh, free running like this, I've actually got uh, the trigger level. It's not actually triggering like that. When it triggers, it... But, well, it's supposed to be triggering. But it's... Look. Look at that. What's going on there? Now, this seems to be a function of the acquisition... Uh, memory length. So I've got it on one meg at the moment. If I put it on automatic, um, please forgive me. Like, I've only been using this scope for five minutes, okay? So, like, you know, I, I don't know how it's all working. I don't even know where it's displaying 15 meg samples. Does it even display the memory depth on here? No, that's a bit of a limitation. Where's the memory depth being displayed? That should be on there somewhere, like down here in this unused section, perhaps? Um, Unless I'm missing it, I'm blind, I can't see where it's set the memory depth, or maybe because it's auto. Anyway, um, so you set it on auto and it's doing it, okay? You can see it's still got that sort of acquisition glitch, I'll call it, um, but you don't get that down at the low uh, memory depths. Look at that, and I haven't tried them all, but I've jumped up a few, it's go up to 100k, Whoop, and you saw that, it just sort of like resampled there at a different time base. So that's kind of weird. I don't know if that's a bug. Haven't actually looked at that, but we're not seeing it with that sort of memory depth. I've got to actually go up to, whoa, see that? See that? Wow, that was interesting. So it did, like it's not flushing the sample buffer properly and it's resizing it and displaying it. Something weird's going on there. Anyway, um, I don't see it, this issue, this bug, until I get to one meg sample per memory. So obviously the automatic uh, mode must be sampling at one meg uh, plus, but yeah, so that it's, <laughs> look at that. That is just ridiculous. That's, that's crazy. There's something seriously wrong with that. Anyway, um, I just wanted to show you that. I've been playing around with this thing and if we put it on the full 20 meg, whoa, see that? That was a different, it's not acquisition buffer. But why it's actually almost like changing the time base there, like like the playback time base kind of thing and compressing that, I, I don't know. Oh, because you've changed the memory depth, okay, then that's going to show a higher frequency waveform. Um, but yeah, that's, jeez, I don't want that. Anyway, I don't see that at um, higher uh, frequencies, by the way. And I don't see that if I, whoop, there we go. Yeah, we can still see it. Still see it like that. And if I go down, oh, and that's actually supposed to be triggering off that, but it ain't. So I'm not sure what the what the deal is there. I've got AC coupling, high frequency reject, um, trigger level, you know, positive slope. I've got all the usual bells and whistles happening there. So it should be doing that, but it's obviously not triggering off. Oh, there we go. It's triggering now. So can I get it to... Maybe it doesn't like triggering at low frequencies. And that slow updating, you expect that based on the uh, time base. Of course, it's interesting that it fills up the post-trigger first and then comes in and displays the, uh, the pre-trigger information. So, hmm. no, no, we don't get it. But if we take that trigger off, does it show up? Is it going to show up? Oh, come on. 
Oh, the auto. Normal. Sorry. We're in auto. Dolt. Come on. Come on. Show up. You're going to make a fool out of me. Nah. Oh, we need auto, of course. To keep, oy, keep refreshing the waveform. Anyway, I just wanted to show you that little bug that I found. Some sort of acquisition uh, bug. And it, it, it's got to be. Surely. I'm not using this thing incorrectly. Come on. I can't be. Can I? <laughs> anyway, anyone else want to confirm? I haven't tried any other like frequencies, configurations. I was just happening to be using a low frequency like this. I was using um, uh, 20. I think I was using 20 hertz, was it? Because somebody in the EV blog forum wanted to know about... Whoa, look at that. Look at that. Someone on the EV blog forum wanted to know about... Uh, you know, noise across various oscilloscopes at different uh, bandwidths. So, oh, sorry, at different on at low frequency like this. So I thought I'd uh, thought I'd try that with 20 meg bandwidth limit on. Um, but wow, that that that's crazy. Come on, it's got to be a bug. Anyway, catch you next time.